Hello and welcome again to this edition of Capital Dateline. I'm your host, Brad Swanson. We are coming to you once again just a few blocks from Florida's capital at the headquarters of the Florida Cable Telecommunications Association. We are joined today by Representative Jay Fan, candidate for Attorney General for the state of Florida. Jay, welcome. Brad, how are you? All right, so, so you're in this race. You've been running for a while now, but uh, our viewers haven't necessarily heard your story. Before we get into kind of the nitty gritty, Tell us a little bit about who you are and, and how you got into politics. Good question, Brad. I've only been in politics for a little over four years. In 2013, as a, a man in my mid-40s, I thought, maybe there's more I can do. And uh, you can join the United Way, uh, you can get involved in the schools, but there was an open house seat. So remembering our civics lessons from our youth, I threw my hat in the ring, and, uh, and I did it for this reason. Um, on the heels of the Obama administration, I just thought I needed to do something. The disregard for our Constitution, how Florida is affected by that, mm -hmm. I thought I'd like to be in the room because uh, if this keeps going, Florida will lose its ability to uh, make our own decisions. Mm -hmm. So I thought I'd get involved and I ran and uh, won by a large, large margin in 2014. Mm -hmm. I think two votes. Two votes. Was the two ultimate votes. Margin. I mean, that's enormous, right? Twi it's right? really twice Typical as many votes Florida as you politics, need to win a race. Typical Florida politics, a few recounts involved. <laughs> right, right. Okay, and you're from the Jacksonville area, Jacksonville, right? Jacksonville, yes. So, uh, so when, you're, when you're not doing politics, uh, what is your day job? Fiduciary services. Okay. So I'm a lawyer, but I'm really a, a business uh, man who is a lawyer. Okay. I come All from right. community banking, okay. and trust work is an extension of what I do there. Excellent, so. excellent. All right, so now you are in the big statewide attorney general's race. I mean, this is this is uh, running across Florida. It, you know, the panhandle is as different from Miami as you can imagine. Uh, why did you get into that race? I mean, that race specifically. I have a heart for defending people from the excesses of government. That's really what the Constitution is designed to do. That's why it was created, uh, the distrust of government in general. Um, in Florida, the states, all the states are sovereign, mm -hmm. and we have to remember that. And when I go around the state, I like to remind people that that document, our Constitution, isn't something you just read in the history books. It's designed to protect you today. So if a wrong-headed government decision happens in your town and says something like, you can't say that, or you can't do that, or your Second Amendment rights feel threatened, that's where a chief legal officer needs to step in. So as an attorney general, potentially, that's what intrigues me about that job, to okay. offer those services to the citizens, to be their man, to stand between them, and when government just goes too far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, and, and I mean, there's also cases that you have to file on behalf of the state of Florida as well against other states and Georgia and water issues and all sorts of Or the federal stuff. government. Right, the federal and government We've seen as well. many examples of the federal government overstepping its bounds, mm -hmm. uh, violating the, the federalist construct of our, of our government, and that's where the state gets to file action against the federal government. Right, right. Well, that, 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 those are always exciting cases for those of us that, uh, that love looking at the intricacies of the relationship between the federal government and the states. Okay, so let's get into some of those top issues. Mm -hmm. You've been out on the trail talking about them, so I'm going to kind of nail down a few of these one by one. So you mentioned the Constitution. The First and Second Amendment are big. What are you, what are you hoping to achieve? What do, you, what do you see there as kind of your top reason to defend those? When you're out around the state, or even here in, in Leon County talking to people, the reservations people have are, what will the government do against my right to say what I want or to bear arms? And I'll give a quick illustration of this. In Florida, we're allowed to carry uh, weapons in a concealed way. If uh, your weapon is inadvertently seen, mm -hmm. maybe you bend over and your jacket lifts up, technically, historically, that's uh, been used as a violation to uh, be subject to arrest. Now, that's a bit of a, a reach uh, against people who are law-abiding citizens who want to protect themselves. If people are out there looking to say, aha, I saw a glimpse of your sidearm, then all of a sudden that Second Amendment needs to come into play. And we need to tell the government, if you're going after, if there's a local officer going after uh, law-abiding citizens, um, someone needs to step in and defend that citizen from that overzealous officer. Yeah. So that's an example of those types of things. That's what people talk about out there. They talk about uh, watching the news all the time and feeling like their point of view can't be heard anymore. Mm -hmm. People are concerned about their First Amendment right to say what they want. Right. 
uh, very top of mind these days. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Okay, so, so we're going to move from the Constitution to a, a crisis of today. We have the opioid crisis. It's national in scope. It definitely was the center focus of the presidential election on many terms. How are you uh, facing this issue, and what do you hope to achieve uh, if and when you become Attorney General? Brad, as serious as you may believe the opioid crisis is, it, it is far more serious than I think we can even reconcile. As I go county to county, it affects small counties and big counties. It affects people low on the socioeconomic scale, but also affects those at the private schools and the country clubs. This, uh, this vicious cycle of either opioid addiction or access to cheap heroin, which is laced with these fatal qualities like fentanyl and carfentanil, is taking addiction problems and turning, turning them into fatalities for the entire range of, of the socioeconomic scale. Um, we are overwhelmed by it. This issue is not going away. It is a top, top priority going into the next cabinet administration. Right and one in which I'm taking very seriously. Yeah, and I'm sure Florida is uh, expending huge resources both on mitigation. I know law enforcement now is carrying an anti-addiction uh, pen to you know, resuscitate people. So, so it's a new day for sure in, in both enforcement and in treatment. It so, uh, All right, so, so let's move on from the opioid addiction and let's talk about what the hurricanes have kind of wreaked on Florida, right? So, so you get occasional bad actors. Fraud is certainly one of the biggest jobs of the Attorney General. Now, let's talk about the hur hurricane-based fraud and what you see, and then let's, you know, I'd love to hear your thoughts on just fraud in general. You're right about that fraud. Uh, fraud, Brad, is the, probably the largest role in the office, uh, consumer protection against fraud, whether Medicare fraud or any type of fraud or unfair and deceptive trade practices that are occurring around the state. And when something terrible like Irma hits Florida, mm -hmm. and it was bad, I'm from Jacksonville, um, snuck up on you. Snuck up on yeah. us and whacked us. I was calling people to stay in Jacksonville, and they were calling me later and saying, you need to leave Jacksonville. Right. And we've had damage that's extensive. When that wholesale damage occurs across the state, Brad, unfortunately, the bad guys will come in and take advantage of it. Uh, one quick example is when a vendor, a bad-minded uh, vendor, may come in and say, I'll clean up your house very quickly. Um, just sign away here. I'll deal with your insurance company. Now, there are good vendors and bad vendors. The bad ones will be in cahoots, possibly with also, there are good lawyers and bad lawyers, the bad lawyers who will inflate, triple, quadruple the cost to fix things that don't need to be fixed right. or just increase those costs. And that uh, causes those insurance costs to go up, which brings those premiums right. up. Right. Well, and that, it's a I mean, broad based fraud generically, on the we state. call that assignment of benefits. That's right. Correct. Right. And and Florida already had a crisis going on before the hurricanes, but yes. now you're seeing just probably extra traffic in that world. This, I think, this will be the instance that says we have no excuse for not addressing the abusive end of the assignment of benefit mm. industry right now. Yeah. Well, okay, so assignment of benefits, let's, let's, let's move from kind of that fraud issue. That is a huge business issue across the state of Florida. Uh, you, you've been, you've, you haven't been shy about e expressing your, your opinions as it comes to protecting and working on behalf of uh, businesses across the, the state of Florida from a fairness standpoint. And what I'm really talking about is uh, you stood up probably uh, um, in, in a, in a lonely-ish posture <laughs> last session on behalf of economic development. Tell us a little bit about that scenario, why you did it, and how do you think that affects your, your view on the Attorney General's race going forward? Uh, granted, economic development seems to have been out of vogue in recent times in the legislature. But remember, I come from business, and economic development is not only the lifeblood of business, it's the lifeblood of communities. Uh, without new businesses coming in and new hirings coming in, uh, you don't expand business. You don't increase the tax rolls. You don't increase incomes. Uh, the charities don't get funded. The churches don't get tithed. Mm -hmm. So it's of vital importance. And we can't chill the effect of that across the state. So I felt incumbent to speak to that very paradigm. Mm -hmm. Um, at a time where, um, as I said, it was in vogue maybe not to. But uh, the Floridians elected me to come to the House and to vote and to speak to the issues that are critical to our success. Mm -hmm. We can't be the only state that doesn't want new businesses to expand here. Right. 
And so I spoke uh, um, sincerely uh, to that, and I continue to do so. Right. Okay. So so let's talk a little bit about the state. Right. So you've been traveling around the state in your in your candidate big state in your candidate role. Right. <laughs> I imagine you've uh, paid for uh, many gallons of gas and burned some tire rubber. Talk to us about what you see as as kind of the the differences. Uh, possibly in what they need or hope out of the Attorney General from like a Miami mm -hmm. to a rural Florida and Clewiston to kind of that family friendly Orlando and just kind of, you know, march us northward or southward, whichever way you want to. And just, just walk us through what you're seeing on the campaign trail from Floridians. Thank you. Uh, it, it, it is a big and diverse state, uh, but that's the fun of it. So if I'm in Miami Dade, um, getting through traffic, we talk about traffic in Miami-Dade. You get Day. through traffic in Miami-Dade? <laughs> Participating right, in traffic right, 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 in Miami-Dade, right. Brad. And it's a sport. You know. It is a sport, and you have to be good at it. Right. The, uh, the locals will talk to you about fairness, um, um, and that often relates to threats of fraud in their industry. Mm -hmm. We want to compete fairly. Uh, we want to make sure that our port business, we have fair competition. And as Attorney General, we look to you to ensure that's the case, that we get a fair shake in, in the business cycle. Um, yesterday, for instance, I was in Lafayette County, much, much, much smaller. People there care about uh, many of the same things, but what is more emphasized, or I would say, the values of what we share as people. Mm -hmm. Will our values be protected? Will we be able to say what we want to say, believe what we want to believe mm -hmm. without being infringed upon? And the, what's great about the Attorney General's role is you can have a hand in both. With my business background, I have a natural intuition toward what threatens free enterprise, mm -hmm. how do we expand the economy. But I also have a heart for families and the things that we hold dear. And that's why this role is just so, so fascinating to me and, and why I spend so much time explaining to people why I seek that office. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think, you know, attorneys generals past, not all of them, but a few of them have come into the office, you know, against Florida's business community, and, and perhaps that's an overstatement, but, but you know, and then you have other attorney generals that come in and understand that balance of, look, we need to protect Floridians, and but yet, yet, yet facilitate good commerce and good transactions. So, so mm -hmm. as you move out of that role of the the mechanics of the office, you're gonna you're gonna sit on the cabinet if you get elected attorney general, and and those decisions are are, are big and, and encompassing, and they really are about the entirety of the state. And we saw this last cabinet under under Governor Scott, you know, not always agreeing on certain appointments. How would how do you approach or how do you envision approaching your role on the cabinet? Like I do now, mm -hmm. which is that I have an independent voice that needs to reflect those who brought me into office. And through a general election, that means an entire state. Mm -hmm. So um, I think sometimes in politics we think, well that politician belongs to another politician. I've never liked that paradigm, as you probably know. What? Uh, I, I, think, I think on the cabinet is, is the, the very best place to, to show that we have uh, a state that gives a strong cabinet to very good governors, but a very strong cabinet too, so that there is a diversity of opinion. And mm -hmm. wouldn't it be nice in our cabinet to have a chief legal officer whose background is in economic expansion through business and has a heart for the Constitution and protecting Florida from the overreach of the federal government? Right. All right. So, so one of our final questions that we love to ask folks that come onto our program, what shows when you are not, you know, pressing yourself against the issues of the day in the state of Florida, what do you come home at the end of the day and turn on and, and watch to kind of decompress? What do you stream? What do you watch? So, so Brad, remember, I have four children at home. And uh, so it's not what I get to choose, it's what's on. Oh, okay. So right. uh, when the homework's done or it's the weekend, it's time to watch something, I, I get generally about four choices. Right. Number one, uh, for my oldest son, it's uh, the baseball playoffs are on. Sure. We're watching the ball game. Okay. And I was right. just asking for Who's the score team? a minute ago. Who's your team? Braves okay. and in uh, the National League, the Marlins in the National League, and of course the Rays. Right, right. Uh, grew up with the Braves, of course. Right. Uh, that we didn't, uh, have, any, we we didn't did. have any teams. As we all then. did, right, that are in our generation. These younger kids, you know, they have their own baseball team. So, okay, so you're watching the Braves. What else? But my, uh, my, 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 uh, my other son also, um, he is a thinker, so mm -hmm. he has the History Channel on, which I think is great. Right, right. And my daughter, my oldest daughter, is uh, she loves horses. So if you search through those channels, you will find these horse events. Mm -hmm. And there's fancy words to describe these horse events. You probably know what they are, and I don't. Sure. But I watch them, and they're I wonderful. I doubt it, but, but I'm just saying, sure, like, <laughs> yes, I'm just agreeing with you. So, all right. Brad, so, wait, wait, so, here's the big winner. Okay. Here's the big winner okay. at home, though. These fix-up shows mm -hmm. 
have captured the imagination oh, yeah? of the my highest, entire family. Yeah. So we're watching Fixer Upper or, or all these other name shows, and uh, I have to say, I enjoy them too. Look, just a shameless plug. When you're on HGTV, <laughs> if you're thinking about places to place your ads as a candidate, I'm just saying, cable's a great place to put those ads, and HGTV has a lot of like. Well, well, Representative Fan, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for sharing with us your philosophy on your attorney's general race. Good luck to you, and uh, we'll stay tuned for, for any news in your campaign. Thank you, Brad. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, that's all the time we have for today's edition of Capital Dateline. Uh, tune in to us on our Facebook page at Capital Dateline Online or follow us on our Twitter feed at the FCTA. For now, thanks for tuning in.